Dana, we're going to talk about how to never have a pile in your house again, guaranteed or your money back, <laughs> but, but how you can actually really, how you can eradicate piles. Because I think we would both say as former messy people, yeah, may there be a pile once in a while, yes, in our homes, but it does not, it doesn't have the same scare factor that it used to. So we're going to talk about that. But before we get started, I want to ask you this question. Today, Dawn is joined by Dana from A Slob Comes Clean an author, speaker, podcaster, YouTuber, and much to her own surprise, a decluttering expert. A Slob Comes Clean is the completely honest and never-ending story of Dana's personal deslobification process. She shares the truth about cleaning, organizing, and decluttering strategies that actually work in real life for real people. For those who maybe don't know you as well, if you're in the Take Your House Back course, you get to see Dana and I visit all the time. But I'm realizing that for a lot of our friends, if you're not in the course, you maybe not know. Uh, you don't know Dana as well. And so, Dana, tell us, why do you de dedicate hours of your week every week to helping women declutter and simplify their homes? Why is that a passion of yours? Uh, it did not start out as my passion. I'll just be honest. I just wanted to be a writer. Like, I wanted to be a writer and I wanted to write about life and things. And the thing that was stopping me was my house. My mm. house was a total disaster. Yeah. And I knew that if I started writing, I would throw myself into it like I do because that's my personality. And so I was like, I'm going to get my house under control first. And I just couldn't. And so I mm -hmm. started writing about that, thinking that I was using it as a way to practice and like learn about writing on the internet and all that. And here we are. Yeah. You know, it's like 14 years later and I'm still <laughs> writing about it, but now it has mm -hmm. turned into my passion because what I discovered through that was that the reason I had always been unsuccessful before was that all of the advice that I heard was coming from people whose brains worked very differently from me because most mm -hmm. of the people who talk about this are naturally organized yes. and their brains work very differently from mine. And mm -hmm. so I had struggled with that. So as I wrote about it and as I figured out what worked, I also learned that there were so many women out there who were exactly like me, but we were all too scared to talk about it. Now I was anonymous in the beginning, right? So that's why mm -hmm. I could talk about it. Yeah. But I, I've learned that, okay, what I have figured out, there are people who need to hear it yes. said this way from this kind of brain. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is so good. And I mean, I think that is what I think is the strength of the Take Your House Back course. This isn't going to just be a commercial for that, although we'd love for you to join us, but it's kind of why the three of us came together. So Dana, you have always stood up for those who are like, I'm sorry, but normal decluttering techniques do not work. You can't just tell me to go get a box and start decluttering and make my three categories or piles or whatever it is, you know? Right. Um, and so you very well, you represent those who are like, those don't work. Um, I have energy limitations time limitations, bandwidth limitations, all the limitations. And you really help to give us tactics that work for that. I love Cass brings in, I mean, she's great at decluttering, but also organizing is her jam. And she's um, helped those of us who, uh, I mean, I used to think organizing was like a four letter word because any organizing I had tried, ever tried to do never stayed and never worked. And I just felt like a big loser in that department. And so it's been really fun for the three of us to come together. And I've really enjoyed working with you because you do have really real life um, down to earth tactics that work. And so when we talk today about how can I get to a point in my house where I do not have piles and I'm not just stuff shuffling, where I'm moving things from one hot spot to another, um, you are totally an expert in this area and I love what you have to say about it. So let's kind of, you know, it's always a little harder for me when we're talking about this in podcasting. I can't like show you a pile on my counter, So, but I think we can do it. So let's start very practically. First, how, why do these piles accumulate in the first place? So are we going to talk about the regular life piles? Or are we going to talk about piles that people make with purpose Ooh. when they're decluttering? Because yeah, okay. That, there's, Good. there's two different types of piles. I like yeah. that. So let's start first with the pile on your kitchen counter or your dining room table. And then we'll go to the, the piles we make when we're decluttering. So I, one of the things I realized about myself as I was working on my home was that I don't see incremental mess. Mm -hmm. I see cleared spaces and then I see totally overwhelming piled up spaces. <laughs> and so I either I'm going, oh, it looks lovely or, oh, but all that in between 
it doesn't register in my brain because huh. one item, things leave my hands. I mean, like, I wish that I was the person who don't ever put something down unless it's in the right place. I'm like, that's mm-hmm. great for you. And I can try to be a different person, but I actually find it's more effective to accept how I actually roll mm-hmm. and work with that yeah. and change my home that way. Right. And so things leave my hands and something leaves my hand and then my brain doesn't register that it's there, but kind of subconsciously it's like, oh, well, there's things on there. And then something else joins it and something else joins it and something else joins it. And all of a sudden I have this pile. So by the time Mm -hmm. I notice it, just natural living, it is already overwhelming. Right. And so that's what I have to both have a way to deal with that when that happens. But then I also have ways to keep it from happening to, to, to pay attention every day. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's so good. And that's what I love is that you may still occasionally have piles of stuff in your house, but you look at it totally different. Like when I see something piled up now, I'm like, oh, I've got the tactics to deal with that. The things have a home. So uh, what what did you notice about these things that were getting piled like on your kitchen counter or dining room table? So the way that I keep that from happening is a five minute pickup. Like that mm-hmm. that's the thing. Like that mm-hmm. will prevent the pile from turning into a pile because I'm dealing with small amounts of things before it becomes that way. Okay. So again, sorry to interrupt, but so again, because you weren't able to create the habit, because I hear this all the time too. Don't put it down, put it away. Right. And everyone's like, it's magical, it changes everything. But if if that has not worked for you, which is totally fine because we're actually all quite different we have to just have set times daily where we say, okay, I am going to take care of this stuff that is landing on the counters or flat surfaces before it even has the opportunity to turn into a pile. Right. And like, I don't set a certain time every day. Sure. Yeah. You're not like, oh, it's 5.05. Everybody drop everything you're doing. And right. Because <laughs> I used to do that because I was like, well, logically that's what I should do, but then yeah. we wouldn't be home or mm-hmm. I would forget, or I would go, I don't feel like doing that today or whatever. And so yeah. instead I'm like, anytime I start to have that, oh, I'm mm-hmm. like, do a five minute pickup. Mm-hmm. And it's generally every day at some point and it, it takes care of that. Right. Okay. So That's good. And for me, I tie it to dinner time. Now we're not always home every dinner time, but most dinner times, because that's usually when I've like, I'm like, okay, I've stopped for the day and I'm like, ooh, look at everything that's gotten undone all day today, right? So then I I gather the troops and I'm like, okay, everybody, like while I'm starting getting dinner going, go to your areas and start picking up. And there's some grumbling, but that's, I've, I've kind of tied it to that. And then it's a not exact time, but at least it's more likely to happen if I tie it to dinner time. So Dana, you're you're picking up, you're holding up the thing, but the reason a lot of these things are landing in these places is because I don't know where to put it, but I don't want to forget about it. <laughs> right, right. So a lot of the, when you're initially dealing with piles, right? Like, let's talk to the people who are like, but I have so many piles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I prevent them. But how do I deal with them? Yeah. Well, I go ahead and I use my decluttering process on that, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a no mess process. And the idea is that I'm going to go item by item. I'm going to establish a home Mm -hmm. and take it to that home. Right. And so we get rid of the trash and the easy stuff and the stuff that obviously needs to go. But when you do get down to those items that you're talking about, like Mm -hmm. this is only here because it has no home. Mm -hmm. I give it a home according to where would I look for it first. Okay. And again, that's embracing how I roll because so many of the problems that I had faced when I tried to get my house under control was that I was doing things the way that the experts said to do them. And then I would get organized and I couldn't find anything, right? Like that's everybody's story, right? Like, oh, I got organized and now I don't know where anything is. Well, that's not being organized. That's like the opposite of it, right? And so I put things in the place where I would look for it first. And then I use that over the, you know, over time, it's like every time I am picking up this spot during a five minute pickup, I, sometimes I ask myself three or four times, where would I look for this first? And it's always the same place. Right. And I take it there and then it becomes something that's easy. And the more times that I do that, the more likely I am to put it away the first time, right. Without setting it in the pile. Yes. I love that so much. And I like what Cass talks about too, is that Uh, you know, again, when we're trying to decide these homes, like where's the first place I would look for it. If we can have it be as close to where it gets used every day, that usually makes a higher likelihood of us 
actually putting it away then when we're done with it. But what's the problem? Like I might say, hey, I want to put the K-Pods for my coffee maker in the drawer right under my coffee maker, but I open the drawer and I'm like, nope, that's where the pot holders are, right? And so sometimes it takes some decluttering or rearranging. And I know you're going to get to this because this is part of your decluttering steps, but okay, I, I want to put the K-Cups in the drawer underneath it, but there's stuff in there. So then what do I do? So, I mean, what I do is not the dramatic, sexy way to do things. I'm just, you know, I mean, like I say, this is where I would look for it. I'm just going to go with that. And if there's no room in this space because there are the pot holders, then I have to make the decision. Okay, there's no room for K-cups in here and pot holders, so I need to get rid of some pot holders. Oh, well, I can't, you know, I mean, it, like, I just go with that because the problem, like, uh, just an example, I had um, recently could not find my printer paper. And I was like, oh, my word, where is my printer paper? I can see on my Amazon or Amazon orders that I ordered printer paper, right? Like, I even thought, did I take that out to my office thinking I was going to get a printer out there? I mean, like, I look, could not find my printer paper. It was literally the cabinet over from where I would look for it first. Yeah. But for some reason, I had mm -hmm. thought, oh, this is logical. I can just yeah. put this here Next because there's <laughs> other stuff because I have, you know, crafty things and, you know, mm -hmm. glue guns and glue sticks and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff in this one. And so I'm going to put it over here. I'll remember that. And I didn't. And I yeah. looked for like a week and couldn't yeah. print the things I needed to print. Right. And so I'm, I go with my instinct and I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what? Glue guns and glue sticks are great. But the reality is I'm in a phase of life where I use printer paper more than I use glue guns and glue sticks. Right. So I'm going to get rid of a bunch of glue guns and glue sticks yeah. and have one glue gun and a couple of glue sticks. Mm -hmm. And those will fit in there. But this is the space where I would look for it first. This is where it needs mm -hmm. to be, even though sometimes I'm like, but I don't want it to be there. Right. <laughs> I can leave myself a note and that's fine. Yeah. You know? And if I have a, if it's not here, where would I look? Great. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, this was the place mm -hmm. where I would look for it first and that's where it needed to go. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. And I think that has been the biggest thing for me and not having piles anymore is being willing to declutter and move out the things that I'm not using so that each of these things, because sometimes I would think like, well, I don't need a spot for sports schedules or I don't need a spot for, I'm trying to think of like examples, but you think like, well, that's just kind of like where it lives is on the counter because that's where it's like, even in my house growing up, that's where it lived. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, but like you said at the beginning, if there's one thing out on the counter, all of a sudden, you know, we know clutter attracts clutter and all of a sudden it's okay for not just me, but everyone else in my household now to leave everything else out around it. And that's when it starts to feel overwhelming. Yeah. Well, and I think that that right there is one thing that people say that, but I would look for it on the counter. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, no, if the counter was clear, mm -hmm. you know, which is the goal that we're moving toward here, yeah. right? Like we mm -hmm. want the counter to be clear. We don't that's not a real home for it. Yeah. You mm -hmm. just on this flat surface because we need that for living, you know, to do mm -hmm. the things that we need to do um, mm -hmm. or to be able to let people in the front door. Right. So yeah. Yeah. like then I say, if this counter was clear, where would I look for it first? Yes. And that's where I'm not adverse to having a junk drawer. Like people will be like, oh, you're a minimalist. You oh, have yeah. a junk drawer. Well, you call it a utility drawer. Once you get it a little bit, you put some containers in it and you organize it just a touch, but it still gets but out of control. You accidentally call it a junk drawer for the rest of your life, right? right? Yeah, right? It'll always be the junk drawer, but yeah. that's okay. We're always going to have mm -hmm. random things, but, but again, like, but where would I look for that random thing? Where would I look for that extra piece that came with the cell phone holder or the whatever? Now, now, this is though where we move into the container concept because mm -hmm. that doesn't mean I can keep everything forever and ever in my junk drawer. Like I still have to occasionally go through it. Right. Because my reason that my, I mean, there were a lot of reasons why my house was a disaster, but one of the biggest ones was that I have this wonderful personality quality where I don't see limits. You know, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I just, it doesn't occur to me that there's a limit to how much of this or whatever I should have or anything. So I had to realize that I was keeping more stuff in my house mm -hmm. than I could possibly ever keep under control. Like yeah. it was not physically possible for my house to be under control because everything was stuffed full to the point where it was spilling out over all yeah. of the spaces. So the container concept means 
I acknowledge that spaces are finite. Containers mm-hmm. serve the purpose of containing, like serving as a limit. Yep. And then I let that help me make those decisions. So like you talked about with the K cups and the, um, what were they? Hot pads, oh, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So those things, it's like, this is the space. Mm-hmm. So that determines how many of the hot pads I can have. And when I start to think of that way, of it that way, it changes how I look at things. Cause I used to like do math of, let me think of the biggest meal that I would ever serve and how many I might possibly need. But when I look at it that way, I go, Oh, in reality, I need to yeah. <laughs> for my hands, <laughs> right. you know, and I can use my cutting boards mm-hmm. as, you know, something to put hot yeah. things on and, you know, it just, or I yeah. mean, honestly, we were at an Airbnb over Thanksgiving and I couldn't find where their stuff was to put on. Mm-hmm. So I put towels under right. it, you know, I'm like, it is fine. Yes. And it, when I start to think of it as I would love to keep these things, I could totally use them, mm-hmm. but the space is the size that it is. Yes. Then it shifts something in my brain and makes me go, oh yeah, technically I'm, I'm fine with just the two. Totally. Yeah. I love that. So again, if you're continually noticing piles, counters, tabletops, flat surfaces, wherever you come in the door, again, we're going to look for, does this thing have a home? Does it just need to be brought there? So that's the five minute pickup. We're just putting stuff in its home where it goes, Mm -hmm. or am I continually noticing? And again, this is the beauty of the five minute pickup. When I'm going to pick up this thing continually does not have a home. And again, we only often collect that data and notice it if we are going to put it away every day. <laughs> you know, almost every day. Um, and then noticing it doesn't have a home. So then at that point, we need to say, okay, this is a thing. Um, I could either declutter it or throw it away, or it is worth having a home. Where would I look for it? And I'm going to create a home in that place. If I have to move some other stuff out, simplify declutter, then I'm going to be willing to do that. Which is kind of easy because, like, the stuff that's out all the time, we are using it. Yeah. Right. And the place where you look for it first, often has stuff that we're never using. Yes. And so when you go to that place and it's full, you just say, what can I get rid of Mm -hmm. in order to create the space for this? And it's, Mm -hmm. it's usually easier than it feels like it's going to be. Just go to that space and give it a try. Yes. So now let's shift gears and let's talk about the piles we often create when we're decluttering, or even I'm kind of thinking of more like storage spaces, catch-all rooms, just those legacy piles <laughs> that have like stacked up and they feel so overwhelming, Dana. Like I, like so many people, they're like, I, I open the door to my catch-all room. I look in there and say, not today. <laughs> and I close the door and walk out. So how can we break this down mentally so it actually feels like something that we can tackle? Yeah. So we teach in the course, um, you know, my no mess decluttering process. So that is a five-step process and it is designed for me, like I made it up for myself Mm -hmm. to break through that feeling of being overwhelmed. Right. And so what I do is I declutter in a way where I don't make any piles. Like that's how Mm -hmm. it's a no mess decluttering process, but I use it on whatever pile I created in the past when I wasn't using this, you know, like, right. Right. So I I use it on any space, whatever. And the first Mm -hmm. step is to just look for trash Mm -hmm. and throw away trash. And the reason that I do that is because when I say trash, I mean, actual trash. Like, I don't mean I'm deciding that it's trash. I'm admitting that it's trash because my mom's been telling me for years that was, you know, no, I'm talking about like, is there any actual trash in this space? Like, I am just going to tell you, like, I'm sitting here and there's like a, you know, some crackers that I ate. There's yeah. trash. Like, right. Like that gives me a thing to deal with yeah. first, mm-hmm. gives me something to look at. And as I'm doing that, I'm starting to look at the individual items that were once part of the pile because a pile that I know contains important things, yes. emotionally volatile things, mm-hmm. I'm overwhelmed and I don't want to deal with that right. because I know I'm going to have to deal with it. And it feels like the whole pile is emotionally volatile, right? Exactly. Yep. But if I say I'm going to remove trash, it reduces the overall size of the pile, mm-hmm. which reduces the overall feeling of being overwhelmed that I feel. And I'm, I'm ready to get going. It gets me moving, right? Yes. And then I move to the next thing, which is the easy stuff. Is there anything here that has an established home? But somehow it ended up here because like we were talking about with piles, right? Like things just attract and become part of the pile. And then maybe you've been looking for this thing for years and you're like, oh, that's where it's been, right? Like that happens in decluttering, right? Yeah. 
And what I love about these first two steps too, which you'll talk about, is that it re-familiarizes yourself with what's in there. Because like you said, we have built this up to be the scariest of the most scary things. I am sh for sure there are checks in there I have not cashed, birth certificates that almost accidentally got recycled, uh, bills I didn't pay. You know, I mean, we, we have, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we've built it up to be this thing. And then you get into it and 90, I don't know, would you say 90% of it isn't actually that scary at all? You're just like, oh, duh. Like, exactly. Well, and it. the beauty of it is that when that pile reappears, you know, which we're just going to be honest and, and pre not pretend that that never happens. Right. Yeah. But the more often that you do that, the more it, the first two steps are all that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it ends up being just trash and easy stuff that, oh, okay. Yeah. But, and, and you get more used to it, but yes, I mean, so many times we imagine so much being there, but the yeah. more we can remove before we actually make a decision or have to mm -hmm. feel any emotions. I mean, like trash and easy stuff are emotion free. They're yeah. decision free. And so we're making mm -hmm. immediate progress. We're starting to feel successful. We're seeing a difference. And in the meantime, we know what's in there, right? So yeah. it's no longer daunting just because we actually know what it is. Yeah, that's awesome. So I've gotten rid of the trash and the easy stuff. What's the next step? The next step is your duh donations, okay? This is just a step that's in there to give you permission to stick stuff in the donate box without having to analyze it. I mean, right? Because you want to make a lot of progress quickly. You want to get out the stuff that doesn't need to be thought about so that the only things you actually have to ask yourself questions about are the things that deserve to have questions asked about them, you know? Yes. So. And we're setting aside, if you're coming across a box of photos that you inherited from your grandma, we're not stopping to go through photos right now. We are skipping them fine to skip something. It is, mm -hmm. we're just getting what we can access, getting mm -hmm. it out of there so that we don't, you know, create these piles. We're just reducing the pile. Totally. And yeah. isn't it amazing that once you get that breathing room in that space mm -hmm. again, you're like, okay, I've gotten out some garbage, some, yeah. you know, obvious donations, put stuff back just where it needs to go. It just, it got put in the basement and never got put in the bin. It goes in, right. Mm -hmm. We're just putting that stuff away. And now all of a sudden we're like, Okay, yeah, there might be some things in here that are going to be harder decisions, but already I am just like feeling better. There's move to room to move around. I've gained a little more confidence in myself. I do have the skills. Oh yeah, I've been listening to Don and Dana forever. Like they're they're, you know, playing in the back of my brain as I'm going through some of this stuff. It's not as scary as I as I thought it was. Yeah. There's so much value in that. Mm -hmm. I, I think we underestimate the value of that seeing the visible progress and yeah. feeling like oh, okay, I'm capable of making an impact here. Yeah. And the beauty of the no mess process is that you can stop there and this space is better than it was before. Even yeah. if you like come back to it another time because you haven't made those piles. Cause I, I, I don't know if we clarify, but like with the easy stuff, when you realize, oh, it has a home somewhere else, you go ahead and take it to that home. You don't set it aside to do later. You go ahead and take it so that everything that's done item by item is completely and totally done. Yes. That's so good. And, you know, a few years back, I did a YouTube video. It's still like, it's one of my most popular videos. I'm like, I'm just going to try out Dana's method of where you take stuff there as you're coming across it. So I was doing our hall closet and I'm like, oh crud, there's like garden stuff in here and I need to take it out to where I outside where I keep all my garden stuff. And I'm like, this is, I'm like, this is going to be such a waste of time and I'm going to get distracted and all the excuses that Dana hears every day. And, but then I, I, I had my things I needed to bring out there. I looked around, found a few more things that went out. I walked out, brought them out there and I came back in and I'm like, oh my goodness, it feels so good that those things are not sitting in a pile on the floor behind me. That is the worst feeling when you have been working on organizing and cleaning out a space only to turn around and realize you actually made no decisions, no progress. You literally just put it on in piles on the floor behind you. <laughs> so it's huge. Yeah. If you have not tried it, you really need to try it. it it's my editor on my books always says I use game changing too much, but like, it is. like this is the game changer. It's yes. the take it there now. And it's the yeah. thing that we resist the most, uh -huh. but it's also the thing that I get emails every day of people saying, okay, I didn't want to, I thought it was uh -huh. stupid. I tried it. Oh my word. Changed everything. You know, yes. like it, it yeah. Yeah. And that's it, how we it, prevent it. the piles. Cause that's what we're mm -hmm. talking about here. Right. Like people yes. clicked on this podcast cause they're like, yeah, I don't want the piles. Mm -hmm. This is how we keep from the piles. And the thing too about the piles is even if we're saying, oh, okay, where would I look for this first? And I put it there into a pile because, oh, I'll deal with that later. I'll actually mm -hmm. take it there later. 
first of all, we're going to have to go back through the pile, which means we have to re-ask that question, yes. remind ourselves, which mm-hmm. is the exact opposite of efficiency to do something twice, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And the other thing too is we're not actually facing the reality of this place where we say we would look for it, right? Mm-hmm. Because like you said, oh, the K-cup's here. Oh, there's no room. Mm-hmm. You know, and so when we take it there now, we face that reality and we move our whole house a step forward by getting rid of some of those, uh, you know, hot pads in order to yeah. be able to make the space for it. Yeah, that's so good because I don't think we look at each thing. You know, I pull out, uh, you know, garden fertilizer that needs to go out there. We don't look at these things as uh, each thing that if we could fully complete that task, we're creating momentum and we are feeling better about the space and we can stop right now. Someone could call and be like, Oh, you got to come get the kids. And I could be like, okay, I can literally stop right now. Um, My family doesn't, you know, maybe I have that track record where I get really excited about decluttering and I pull everything out and then it stays like that for multiple weeks. Um, Like I I'm creating momentum. I'm feeling good. I can stop at any time and still feel like I've made progress. And so that, I mean, that really can shift everything in how you go about decluttering your house so that you don't feel defeated. Again, as we head into a new year, I know there's so many that would really love to achieve their decluttering goals this year. This change in and of itself could really, it could be the game changer (laughs) for how you declutter your house. It really is. And it's funny to me how many people will say, I saw how it worked in my physical space and it has changed how I do a lot of other things. Like mm-hmm. if I can just complete the task, yes, then I don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah. Right? Like it's yeah. not something hanging over my head. And yeah. I think sometimes we don't realize how many times we put ourselves in a position where a task or a to do or whatever is just hanging there because yeah. we we almost completed it. Yeah, we yeah. made a decision, but we mm-hmm. didn't really act on it, and so it's yeah. just kind of there. Yeah. yeah. That's so good. Okay, finish us up with your steps then in our in our in our space we're working on here today. <laughs> so it's the two decluttering questions. So the first question. So at this point in the process, the only stuff that's in here is stuff that I either don't know what to do with it or it belongs in this space, right? Yep. And so at that point, I ask myself if I needed this item, where would I look for it first? That's how I establish the home for mm-hmm. it. Okay. Yep. Um, identify the home basically, mm-hmm. and I take it there now. Deal with the reality of that space whatever had to leave that space to make room for it. I bring it back to my trash bag and donate box that are at the original space I was working on. Mm -hmm. And, um, as I do that, then, uh, when I can't answer that question, I have to ask the second decluttering question, which is if I needed this item, would it occur to me that I already had one? Like, would, would I ever go looking for it? Cause I didn't have a place where I would look first, which mm-hmm. means I wouldn't look for it, which right. means I would go out and buy another one, which mm-hmm. is the exact opposite of what I'm trying to do here. Right. And I, yeah. I know I'm going through this super fast, And there's like so many words that I've spoken on this, you know, so I, if somebody's like, wait, what? I'm like, don't worry. There's lots more words elsewhere. And then take your house back. We go through it. We talk about it a lot, but but it's that reality of, okay, this is something I would not even think to look for. So it shouldn't be in my house. Right. Um, if you insist that you would look for it, then you have to have a place where you would look for it first, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so at that point, the only stuff left in here is stuff that should be here, but I mm-hmm. still have to embrace the reality of the space. Yes. If there is more stuff than is usably, get toably, functionally in this space, mm-hmm. then I need to get rid of my least favorites mm-hmm. until this space is functional, right? So yes. meaning the drawer needs to be able to close. Yep. The, you know, that I need to be able to see and access what I'm getting on this shelf, you know, mm-hmm. so I need to get rid of things until it, you know, is yeah. functional in this yeah. space. The, I mean, the container concept is, I mean, probably one of the most powerful tools out yeah. there of like, you know, and I've said before, like, uh, make the boundaries the bad guy. Like, mm-hmm. you're, yes. you're, there's nothing wrong with you or anything. It's like you're literally saying, my space has limitations and it can only hold so much. And I'm going to pare down to what fits inside. Right. I don't have to make a value decision. I don't have to say this knife that my grandpa gave me when I was four is not a valuable item, like emotionally, whatever. I don't have to say that. I just have to say, I only have so much space for knives. And this is the one I use. Yeah. And I love this thing, but there's no room for it. Right. Like, so Mm -hmm. it's not me, it's the realities of the space. And there is something about that that shifts Mm -hmm. something in my brain and lets me let things go. Yeah. No, that's so good. And for me, it was this realization too that 
you know, I mean, Dana, you have a pretty big house now. I have a very teeny tiny house and it actually doesn't matter. It actually more matters how much can I manage? How much can I remember that it's there? Because like you said, if you don't remember that it's there, it does not exist. It has no value, no value whatsoever. And it's so only have, making life harder. It's only, and it's yeah. hiding other stuff. So then you're rebuying even yep. more stuff, right? And so mm -hmm. as we've like really significantly reduced the inventory in our house, now I can see what I have. I can remember, and not even because I'm really remembering, but because I do know where I would look for that thing first. And it, I, I know confidently it would be there because we have so few spots and so much stuff to manage, right? So yeah. I'm still not remembering everything, but I have a better chance now yes. of knowing where it is and being able to stay on top of it. Yeah, absolutely. So this is where we do invite you to join us in the Take Your House Back course because I know, Dana, often people will say like, hey, I listen to Dana's podcast. I've watched your guys' YouTube videos. How is the course different than that? So what would you say is the biggest difference between videos or YouTube stuff that's out there and what we share within the course? Well, I think kind of like today, you know, we talk about these things. We talk about how it works in our individual homes. We obviously the all three of us have thought a lot about this stuff, you yeah. know, because we teach it and we've also all lived it and come to these points of, okay, we've got this figured out. And then we come together. And I was amazed when we first like actually met in person and went through and, and did the videos. I was like, we came to very similar conclusions. I remember casting on something that we were talking about. She was like, I think I'm going to think differently than y'all. Yeah. And then we went through it and had the discussion. And she was like, Oh, we all think very similarly yeah. on this issue and yeah. we come at it from three different ways. And so it, it just makes it deeper yeah. and makes it richer mm -hmm. and it turns on those light bulbs in people's minds. Totally. I, I think. This course has changed my life. I've always wanted to be organized and I never felt like I was until now. I've always felt like I was really messy and my, I grew up in a messy house and, and I didn't realize you could actually live without all the junk. I love how this course combines the three of them into a more comprehensive, thorough look. I've been able to keep things simple where my kids can help both with their laundry and their toys, and we can be in a settled space in no time. Like the all day declutters are amazing. The first one I did was in May and I reclaimed three rooms of my house and got rid of like two carloads full of stuff. And I would highly recommend it even for people who are naturally organized. Try it, see what it'll happen. You never know until you do. But then we also recognize, because I know I'll often hear people say like, I've, I've bought courses, I've bought programs and I never do it, right? There's just never that time where I get around to it. And so then that's why we also added in our all day declutters because we know for many, we need a date on the calendar. We need some accountability. I need to know there's gonna be lots of other friends there doing it. And these, I don't know about you, Dana, but these have turned into some of our favorite things that we do, that I do all year long because it is so impactful. Like at the end of the day, when you see the amount of decluttering that gets done, it far exceeds if you just took a Saturday on your own and said, I'm going in, right? And so there is something about it being guided and structured. We have specific areas that we tackle on those days and having thousands of other people from around the world joining. It's, it's hard to describe the energy that takes place on those days. I was at somebody's house helping them doing a you know a video for YouTube and she was like we we're working in a garage she said just come and see my house she said you're not going to believe I did so much on the last all day declutter and just went through and she was like this is what it looked like before and this is how I mean it's 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 like a leaps and bounds kind yeah. of a thing yes. you know there's the course mm -hmm. that is all self-paced mm -hmm. and you can take it and use it but it, it's like you need that injection of energy that that comes along with those yeah. all day declutters and it's totally relative to those who might be saying, but I can't do eight hours of decluttering. Mm -hmm. Totally understand. But even if you can only do a half hour of decluttering, I guarantee you um, that that half hour is going to be even more productive and powerful than if you had just done it on your own. So it, it's going to multiply the, the maybe the little bit of time and energy you do have. Um, it's going to make it 
even more productive than it would, I believe, if you're not. And, and in fact, we just <laughs> decided to work. I mean, we're extending our return policy for a full year because we believe in this course so much. And if you would purchase it right now, it's on sale for $94. If you would purchase it and say, I did not get the value out of it, or, um, you know, honestly, if you just say, I never even logged in, that we will give you your money back because that's not what we're here for. We are here to help you make serious yeah. changes in your house this year. And we believe so strongly that we have the program and the accountability and the motivation and the tactics and the teaching. And we just have a lot of fun too. Like we can yeah. actually make decluttering fun as well. And we just believe so strongly in this program. And so uh, for, for a full year, if you want your money back, you may absolutely have your money back, but I just don't believe that's going to be the case. And then we also have a payment plan available if that's helpful too. So Dana, any last encouragement for anyone that might be on the fence about joining the, the course? Yeah, I, I, I just, I get it, right? Like it's a lot of money. It's on sale right now, but it's still a lot of money. And I am naturally frugal. Like I was mm -hmm. born that way, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In my genetics. <laughs> so I get it, but I also have seen the power of it. Like I have seen what it has done for people and the changes that people have made. And like, not to toot our own horns here, but like, People are passionate yeah. about this course, like <laughs> yeah. more than I think we had any idea. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I feel like you saw more than I did what it could be, but like, I'm just like the passion that people have about, the, you yeah. know, the changes that they've made in their home. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, we would love for you to join us. Of course, we'll put links everywhere. Links should be so that you can track it down. Um, we'll also put our support email too. If you have any questions, you can gift it. We have gift certificates too. So it's always fun if you can invite some friends or family to join you as well. It's just, I don't know, it makes it more fun if we can all do it together. All right. Well, Dana, thank you so much. And hopefully we've given you some ideas for how to really sincerely eradicate the piles around your house. We are two messy people that, um, I mean, I just thought I would live with piles forever, to be honest. But I think we can both honestly say like that it's just not a non-issue and if they do happen to appear we just know what to do with them and so yeah. that feels really good and we want that for you too all right well we hope you have a, a great day and we look forward to seeing you inside the take your house back course thank you so much for joining us today if you're looking for more support be sure to check out the minimal mom on youtube too